Hello everyone, Waldos is here with another Maker Mash Nations video, bringing you your daily dose of death traps. Today we're going to be doing another trap deep dive, this time looking at the humble hollow cube. As always, if you do enjoy the video, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe, as it really helps me out growing this channel. And I can't thank you all enough for the support that you've given me so far. Also, before we get into the deep dive, for those of you who aren't aware, I have launched a social raid finder webpage where you can share or find social raids from the community to avoid your Prestige 10 outposts from going to waste. This is now available in a very early beta stage over at raidme.co.uk, allowing you to post up your raids or find raids posted by other people under various categories. I will be making some changes to it over the coming months, but it's currently available for you to start using if you do want to jump over and have a go. But without further ado, let's jump into the deep dive and start looking at some hollow cubes. Hollow cubes are a very simple trap used to hide other traps or guards until you get within a certain radius of the hollow cube itself, at which point the cube will disappear, allowing any hidden traps or guards to trigger accordingly and aggro onto you. Prior to triggering, these cubes take the form of bedrock cubes, similar to second wave corrosive cubes. As such, depending on your room positioning and setup, they can be fairly obvious, so it's extremely important to position them correctly to get the most out of them. It's also worth noting that if you try and grapple onto a hollow cube without a valid target behind it, you will get this red identifier, enabling you to check hollow cubes at a distance. Due to their appearance mirroring that of bedrock cubes, placing them in the middle of a corridor that utilises a single tile type for a floor or a wall can make them extremely easy to see. As such, try to mix them into areas where your pathways and rooms traverse through pre-existing bedrock. This makes them much harder to see and predict. You can also put them into the ceiling in areas of low visibility, just for an extra barrier to seeing what would otherwise be an obvious trap. However, due to their bedrock appearance, this can make them a bit more obvious, especially if you built your base up into the air from the entrance, rather than going down, as it would be less likely that you'll have more bedrock in the sky, depending on the layout of your ritual site. Like when concealing other traps, hollow cubes massively benefit from changes in height, as hollow cubes on the ceiling or floor are harder to see when you're going up and down ramps, but do bear in mind that you cannot make angled hollow cubes. Wall-mounted hollow cubes are also really useful, but do bear in mind that they limit whatever trap is behind them to a direct line, as traps like an iron claw or a hunter modified bull trap cannot fire through the normal blocks, so it'll fire through the gap that the hollow cube has made, but not through the nearby walls, meaning that no matter what you're hiding, you want to have a direct line to your target. This makes them ideal for hiding things like bombs which can spread out over a wide area, but makes them slightly less effective in concealing things like a bolt trap unless they're used at the end of a corridor. So in placing your traps, definitely consider the directional escape routes that your target has when you choose your position to make sure that you're going to keep the direct line for as long as possible. So let's talk mods. Most mods for the holocube are quite simple, but offer up a few alternate mechanical applications, primarily focused around how they interact with other traps. The first of these is Eagle Eye, and Eagle Eye is a really simple mod, but also the one you're likely to surprise people with the most. You see, Eagle Eye increases the trigger range of a hollow cube to three cubes, rather than its standard one cube distance. And whilst most builders use hollow cubes for short distance reactive trapping, the longer trigger distance of Eagle Eye is actually really good at catching raiders off guard, as it's often unlikely that they'll have checked for hollow cubes at that increased range. This mixes well with long range traps, as you can conceal them easier on approach, but still utilize some of that range. The second mod is Picture Perfect. Now, I am not a big fan of this particular mod. Essentially, hollow cubes have a very small shimmer to them, and this Picture Perfect mod will hide that shimmer from the raider. This shimmer actually is not that easy to spot in general, and with the fact that you can check it using your grappling hook or simply by shooting a cube, it isn't overly useful compared to some of the other mods, and I personally think you're better off saving the capacity here. However, if you do have a hollow cube that is in clear vision for a long while before the raider gets to it, maybe something at the end of a particularly long corridor, then maybe you want to pop it on, just the little investment in making it that little bit less visible. But overall, I'd definitely say save your capacity. Third up, we have Masquerade, and this is by far the most technically advanced mod for the Holocube, allowing it to be treated as a normal block by your guards until it triggers. 
And this is particularly powerful when used with guards that have patrol set. You see, if a guard's patrol goes through the hollow cube, then until that hollow cube is triggered, the guard will remain stationary. This means that you can hide them around corners or make someone go through a long path that goes through that hollow cube to effectively pause a patrol until your radar gets to a certain part in your outpost. And it's worthwhile noting that those raiders can come from absolutely anywhere as long as their patrol path passes through that particular cube. I mean, you could have guards coming from all sorts of hidden pathways, all converging on a single central area to do a multi-directional ambush, which can be really fun to experiment with. And finally, we have Second Wave, which works exactly the same as every other Second Wave mod and makes it so the holocube can only be triggered during the second phase of your outpost. It is worth noting that just like corrosive cubes, if the HRV has an alternate path out of the base, you can collapse the pathways that the player has taken on their way in by constructing the pathways with second wave cubes and having them fall away once you grab that gen mat. Now hollow cubes can combine with pretty much any trap in the game and will generally be used to hide your other trap combinations. So in this video, rather than going through trap combinations themselves, I want to show off a couple of interactions that you can work into your trap combos. Okay, so let's start with the example of a typical bolt trap. As you can see here, I placed a bolt trap on the far side and it's going to trigger when I reach this line here, which is about eight cubes away. If I walk over that, you can see it triggers and fires quite a way down here. So it actually gets a range of about 10 squares, but it triggers eight squares away. So now if I go back into the building, and this time I'm going to add in a hollow cube just in front of that um, bolt trap. Now if I swap back to testing again, you can see here that line no longer triggers the bolt trap. And actually I can get right up to two cubes away without actually triggering that bolter at all. And it only triggers when I get this close here and that cube vanishes, at which point it will fire. Which means I've now restricted that bolt trap's range down to one cube. Now if I go back to building and place the eagle eye mod on that cube and move back away from it, we'll go back into testing mode. And this time it's no longer got that long range as we mentioned before, but now because we're using eagle eye it will trigger quite a way away and still fire It's the same. So that enables me to get a little bit more range onto that trap and a little bit more utilization in terms of where it's firing. So your trap range will always be restricted completely by the range of your hollow cube. Okay, so let's talk about triggering a patrol or an ambush. If we look at this hollow cube here, I've set one up with Eagle Eye and Masquerade, enabling it to trigger from three steps away, but also stopping any guards from passing through it. And you can see the demo of my guards patrol has actually stopped right behind this cube. This patrol that I've got set up here is actually two warmongers hidden in these side pathways. The first of which will come through the doorway to the right and set up post here. The second of which will come through the doorway to the left and set up post here. Now if I move over and test this, you can see how this is actually going to trigger. And I'm gonna do this from a long range by shooting out the hollow cube just to show the patrols. So if I take a shot from here and I shoot out that hollow cube, you can see the warmongers move to their patrol spots. And of course I am in range of them, so they have aggroed. Now, if I was to walk forward and trigger the hollow cube from the eagle eye range, they would immediately trigger and start coming running straight at me. Really good for getting yourself a quick ambush in place. Now, this particular setup can be really useful at catching people who are trying to speed run through your outpost. Because as they run past the hollow cube, this will trigger and release the guards. But if the guards don't immediately aggro, they will continue on down their patrol path. So if, for example, the raider was crossing along here and carried on in that direction, the guards could actually follow behind on their patrol path to follow the raider into a more enclosed space, giving you the ability to catch them out unawares. And finally, I want to talk about the gen mat trap. So one of the common things that people will do when they see your gem mat is they'll normally go for a quick grab, expecting second wave traps to come on their way out of the room. And because the delay in second wave triggers, most people will come into this room and not expect something to trigger fast enough to catch them out. And you can bait people into this by using a hollow cube that has the trigger range onto the gen mat. And again, you can use eagle eye to hide this away a little bit more if you wanted to. 
it's worthwhile noting that a hollow cube that is directly attached to the gen mat will trigger as someone picks up the gen mat. So in this case, this is a fairly common trap that I've seen, whereas if I grab the gen mat, it has an incinerator behind it. And if you had Dragon's Breath on that, that would very easily have caught me just then. So just a very easy and typical trick that you can use to catch people out as they grab that gen mat. So just a quick overview on that setup, it's simply a hollow cube attached directly to my gen mat, behind which there is an incinerator. Neither of these have second wave on them, because you want these to trigger whilst your second wave is actually setting up in the background and hopefully distracting the raider. This works particularly well with incinerators, iron claws, and also bolt traps, which can fire down the range of the corridor. Overall, quite effective, and raiders do get caught out by it quite a lot. And that is it for today's video on the hollow cube. I hope you found a few tips to make your death trap that little bit more deadly. And as always, I'll see you in the wasteland.